Greetings and salutations, my friends. My name is Travis, AKA Dad, and welcome to Dad Does Tech. My goal is to help make your life simple by helping you find the right products and get the most out of your gear. Today, we are going to be exploring a new video editing PC, how to get the most bang for your buck and build a video editing PC, a powerhouse under $1,000. Let's make it simple. In today's video editing PC guide, we're going to focus on building the best PC possible for 4K editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. So if you're an Adobe Premiere Pro user, this video is for you. I'll have all the parts and components that we're going to be talking about in today's video listed down in the description below, as well as links to where I found the cheapest prices currently at the time of making this video. Now these are affiliate links and nobody's paying me to make this video, but if you do purchase something using one of the links in the description below, I may get a small commission from that purchase. On to the build! We're gonna start with what is in my opinion the most crucial part of this PC, the CPU. The processor I've chosen for this build is the Ryzen 7 3700X. And the reason I've chosen this model is because it's part of Ryzen's third generation line, which means it's its newest line of processors, and it benchmarks really close to an Intel i7. We're talking about like a 1% margin of difference. Now there is a Ryzen 7 3800X, and it clocks in at about 100 megahertz faster than the 3700X. However, it only gets you probably one to 2% more performance overall when it comes to video editing and it's about $70 give or take whenever you're watching this video prices on computer parts fluctuate you know at the end of this sentence it'll be different it's not necessarily something I would recommend doing because the price to performance difference it really is very marginal and that money could be better spent in other areas of the PC where I think you'd see more value if you had a little extra money and you really wanted to spend it on CPU to get optimal performance, you might as well go ahead and up the spend all the way up to the Ryzen 9 3900X, which is insane at 12 cores and 24 threads. Those are numbers that are just ridiculous to think about. Regardless of which processor you decided to choose, all three of those will give you more than enough power to chew through 4K, 6K, and maybe even 8K footage. At the time of making this video, Premiere Pro prioritizes the CPU well over the GPU or graphics card. So if you want the best overall editing experience, it'll be smoother with a more powerful processor. The next component we're gonna talk about is the motherboard, and the motherboard is the big chip that all the other components we're gonna talk about will connect to and ultimately give you a PC that works. The motherboard we're gonna use for this build is the Asus Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi Edition. There's two different versions, one that has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and one that doesn't. And for the price difference, which is at the time of making this video $10, I would go ahead and get the one with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. If you decide to get a board that doesn't have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, that's not a big deal because you can add a little dongle or adapter for 20 bucks and that'll cover your bases there. This motherboard comes compatible and ready to roll for Ryzen second and third generation processors. So you won't have to do any firmware or BIOS tinkering unless you really want to, but the nice thing about this board is it'll be turnkey for your CPU. One of the best things about this board has to be how many features and how many ports that it has. It has two slots for M.2 SSDs. It also has seven total USB slots, two that are USB 3.2 second generation, four that are USB 3.2 first generation, and even a USB type C slot. Hmm. The next thing we're gonna pick up is a Sabrent 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. This will work great with your board and it's gonna have super fast read and write speeds so when you're transferring your footage from folder to folder, it's gonna be really fast. If you find yourself in the boat thinking that's not gonna be enough storage for me, you could up the storage for this SSD to one terabyte for about $40 more, but for the sake of this build, keeping it within the $1,000 price mark, I'm gonna put it at 512 gigabytes. You could also get a bunch of external hard drives if you wanna store all your footage separately. That's what I personally do. My internal SSD actually only runs my active projects and 
my operating system. All my other project files and things are stored on external hard drives. We're gonna pair this super fast SSD with 32 oh so glorious gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Oh, I apologize for that. The RAM that I've chosen for this are two 16 gigabyte sticks of Team Group T-Force Vulcan RAM, 3200 megahertz. This RAM is super fast and it works great with this board. I actually just used it in a build recently and I couldn't be happier. I know you've all been sitting here waiting for this part. You've probably just been sitting there shouting, get to the graphics card already. Well, here we are. The graphics card that we're gonna be using is the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660. Now I specifically chose the MSI model here, but you can get it from Zotac or EVGA or Asus. All of those will be just fine. I specifically chose MSI because it was actually the cheapest one currently on sale. The GTX 1660 graphics card has six gigabytes of VRAM, two fans, and performs excellent in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now the reason that I went with this graphics card over something let's say from AMD is because Adobe Premiere Pro supports Nvidia's CUDA core technology. AMD is built on a totally different architecture that Adobe Premiere doesn't support. So by default, even if AMD's graphics card is superior in almost every way, a lot of cards from NVIDIA still perform better in Adobe Premiere Pro because of the CUDA core architecture that it has. Now, if you're watching this video and you're not an Adobe Premiere user or you're an Adobe Premiere user and also a DaVinci Resolve user, an AMD card could be a great compromise. You lose a little bit of performance in Adobe Premiere Pro. It's gonna struggle a little bit more in the rendering, especially at full resolution or 4K or above. But DaVinci Resolve, on the other hand, may perform significantly better with those extra two gigabytes of VRAM. To that point though, I know that there are far better cards than the GTX 1660 out there, but this fits within our price range and is gonna get you a great performance to price value here. And since Adobe Premiere Pro prioritizes CPU performance over GPU performance, the money is also better spent there than on the GPU. Not saying the GPU is not important, the graphics card is easily the second most important component, but if you have to choose one, go with the CPU. Time to talk about easily the most boring component of any computer build, the power supply. Nothing crazy here, we're just gonna go with the Thermaltake 600 watt smart power supply. It's gonna have a ton of cables because it's not modular, so you're gonna have to try and hide cables in your case to make it look a little more clean. If you wanna spend a little bit more money, you can get something that is semi-modular or fully modular. I personally like the Corsair CX series. The Corsair CX 650 watt power supply is pretty solid. It's semi-modular and I can personally endorse it because I use it in my current PC. And last, but most certainly not least, the most important component when it comes to style is the case. The thing that you're gonna put all of those parts in. The case I've chosen is the Masterbox NR600 from Cooler Master. The reason that I went with this case is primarily because it is extremely affordable, good looking, and most importantly, it has good thermals. When you're doing a lot of video editing or running a lot of programs on your PC, one of the things that tends to happen is your computer naturally will start to heat up. So it's super important that you have a case that has good thermals, meaning that it moves air from front to back with the fan system so that it disperses the heat effectively. This case is by far one of the best options you can get when it comes to cheap case and really good airflow for your system. It also has a pretty cool glass window on the side. It's tempered glass. You'll be able to look through there and see all your hard work and your cool computer components. And then you could trip it out with some RGB lights. Man, then the party's really started. I get super excited about this kind of stuff. I am such a nerd. Nerd power unite! And that's it. You put all those parts together and you are gonna have one monster 4K and up video editing PC for Premiere Pro, and you're gonna love it. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this PC build, but if you wanna see more PC builds just like this for different price ranges, maybe a budget PC that's sub $700 or so, or an all-time pro PC, let me know at what price ranges you wanna see, and I'd be happy to build more guides just like this for different budgets. As always, if you liked this video, found it helpful or mildly entertaining, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one. Later.